Hey friend, this screencast is going to walk through getting, installing, building, and running OpenXML Power Tools 4.0 from GitHub. For today's demonstration, I'm using Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition. You can get it at this link. The same procedure works with Visual Studio 2013. Just make sure that you have Update 4. You'll need to use Git, of course, to get OpenXML Power Tools from GitHub. The new Power Tools for OpenXML relies on the open source OpenXML SDK that is also on GitHub. Before we can download, compile, and use, and run Power Tools for OpenXML, we need to get the OpenXML SDK and build it. The way that these projects are set up, they expect that the OpenXML SDK and OpenXML Power Tools repos to be siblings to each other in the file system. If you want to use the PowerShell commandlets, one easy way to do this is to make their parent directory be documents slash Windows PowerShell slash modules. PowerShell by default looks in this directory for modules, and if you put those two modules in this location, immediately after building the OpenXML SDK, you can start using the OpenXML Power Tools commandlets. The commandlets actually build themselves or build the C-sharp modules that the commandlets use. If you're not interested in running the PowerShell commandlets, you can put these two repos side by side in any directory, including your documents directory. For this demo, I'll put them into documents slash Windows PowerShell slash modules. I'll open up git bash. I'll change into that directory. If you don't have these directories already on your computer, you can simply create them. The command that you'll want in order to get the OpenXML SDK is git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash office dev slash open dash xml dash sdk. Now I'll press the up arrow key to get back to the previous git clone command and I'll replace sdk with power tools. So the command is git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash office dev slash open dash xml dash power tools. Now let's build the open xml sdk. Go into the open xml sdk directory. Open up the open dash xml dash sdk dot sln file. After the solution opens, click Build, Build Solution. It will do all the necessary stuff, such as restoring NuGet packages for XUnit tests. And it's done. As I mentioned, we now have XUnit tests for the OpenXML SDK. So good thing to do is open up Test Explorer and make sure that all of the XUnit tests pass. After Visual Studio gets done processing the various test assemblies, it compiles a list of tests and puts them into the test explorer and we can click run all. 205 tests passed. We're done building the OpenXML SDK. That's all we need to do in order to get the commandlets to work with Power Tools for OpenXML. We import module OpenXML Power Tools. Of course, as necessary, you will have to set execution policy as appropriate. To do that, open up PowerShell in administrator mode and set execution policy to either unrestricted or remote signed. We can look at the list of commandlets that are in that module, and there they all are. Now that we've installed Power Tools for OpenXML, we can test the commandlets, and the way that we can do this is to go into an empty directory, and we can run a commandlet, test open XML Power Tools commandlets. Those tests pass. We can also use open XML Power Tools from C-sharp programs using Visual Studio. We want to 
to open up the openxmlpowertools.sln file. By the way, PowerTools for OpenXML also works on .NET version 3.5. This is particularly important to those of you who are doing, say, SharePoint 2010 development, where that is the supported framework for extending SharePoint. Let's take a look inside of this openxmlpowertools.sln file. There are two projects in this solution. One is the OpenXML Power Tools themselves. This is all of the C Sharp code that comprises OpenXML Power Tools. And the other module are the XUnit tests. Let's build this solution. After building the solution, we can see all of our tests in the test explorer. I can click run all and they all pass. When I am working on the OpenXML Power Tools, I use this solution because it enables me to very easily add XUnit tests and to maintain the actual source code of Power Tools for OpenXML. Developers new to OpenXML Power Tools will be interested in this OpenXML Power Tools examples solution. I'll open it up. We just built the OpenXML Power Tools using that previous solution. So all of the tests show up here as well. In addition to the OpenXML Power Tools and the XUnit tests, this solution has projects for all of the examples for OpenXML Power Tools. I'll set this Document Assembler example as the startup project. Document Assembler is a new module in Power Tools for OpenXML that enables you to take a template document that looks something like this. It has these sequences of text in the document that are delineated with this less than hash and hash greater than. And there are little bits of XML inside of those delineators. Document Assembler takes an XML file and that template file and produces a new document where all of those less than hash and hash greater than sequences of characters are replaced with content from the XML file. I'll run the example and it runs. We can look at the assembled document. And here we can see the contents of the assembled document contain data from from that XML file. I don't have Office installed on this test virtual machine, so we're looking at this assembled document in WordPad, which doesn't have all of the features that Word does. If you use this actually in Word, you'll see all the formatting be preserved as it should be. And of course, we have all of the power tools for OpenXML examples that you've seen previously in their home on CodePlex. That's all there is to this. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.